Okay, so I'm just about to start, start a drawing of Sarah. And so Mark Gilbert so is an I'm associate like professor with the College of Communication, Fine Arts and Media at the University of Nebraska at Omaha. He is also participating faculty with UNO's Medical Humanities Program. You know, if we were all drawing Sarah at the same point just now, we'd all, all our drawings would look different. I was born in, born in Glasgow, um, Scotland. Um, both my parents were, were, were artists. Mark's life changed dramatically 20 years ago when he was invited by a head and neck surgeon in London to come and work with him and his patients and explore the healing power of art. When you look at a picture of somebody, you're not just looking at a picture, you're looking at a picture of somebody being looked at. And so immediately, I think we underestimate the relational aspect of what happens within a portrait. For his initial studies, Mark painted portraits of people who live with facial difference after they had undergone surgery for head and neck cancer. And so what was remarkable is that people who you would normally, you know, didn't like looking at photographs or didn't like looking in the mirror, somehow they felt that the painting was an honest depiction of how they, not just how they looked, but also how they felt. Mark was curious as to why this was often the case. I think it wasn't just to do with the images. I think a great deal of it was that they saw is that the image was a testament to the relationship. So the relationship that I developed with them, which was important for both of us, for both the artist and the sitter, to be able to get through the process, um, I think, you know, um, helped, you know, shaped the way that they then viewed the final image. Mark's late father, Norman Gilbert, drew a series of portraits of Mark's mother while she was on her deathbed during the last week of her life. He sat drawing her right up to the, you know, to the final drawing he did the moments after she died. You know, obviously on a personal basis, those pictures are incredibly moving. They allow me to build a picture of what happened. They allow me and anybody else that sees them to build a picture of what happened that week. But also, they kind of forced me to come from behind the easel. I always valued what the people I painted had said and how they responded. But I don't think it was until I actually looked at those drawings of what was potentially one of the most traumatic moments of my life that I kind of really, you know, I almost felt, you know, it made me really empathize even more with what, the, and relate even more with what the people who I'd been working with had said over the years. Mark is presently working on a poignant project for UNO's Medical Humanities Program. So this drawing, and the work that I'm doing with Sarah and others is a study that's using an arts-based methodology, so specifically portraiture, to explore the experience of frontline healthcare workers working during the pandemic. Sarah Lane is one such worker who jumped at the opportunity to be a part of Mark's current study. The first couple um, interactions, it was therapeutic for me. It was kind of, in a way, cathartic. Sarah is a nurse coordinator in the critical care unit at Methodist Hospital in Omaha. Mark painted this portrait of her on one of her first visits to his studio. I think the thing that I look at the most is probably my eyes. And I just know like the heaviness and like the sadness and stuff that I, and stress that I was feeling at that moment. You know, I think it's a really, really neat painting, but it also makes me a little sad to think about how I felt at that time, too. I think we underestimate how pictures, how the arts in all their forms can be a means of engagement, you know, speak to populations beyond academia, you know, so it can be terrifically accessible in an incredibly powerful way of ge generating important conversations around illness and care and caregiving. I think the biggest takeaway that I have gotten through this experience is just to remember to always um, kind of give people the benefit of the doubt and not assume. I don't think I've ever worked with a, a group on any of my studies that actually the kind of emotions are so on the surface.